Thank you, Archdeacon. Thank you, Archdeacon, for the introduction. Good morning. Good morning, brothers and sisters. I'm Jackie Campbell, and Arch Archdeacon says I'm a medical doctor. And the topic this morning is on dementia. Anybody has ever heard the term dementia? Okay, so I don't need to go into any long thing as such but to get a, a sort of, to gauge my, myself, uh, what is it that you know about dementia? When you hear the term dementia, what is it that comes to your mind? Memory loss. Memory loss. Anything else? I heard somebody said Alzheimer's. Uh-huh. So wait, let us go into some details here. Kevin? So dementia is really several diseases and what these diseases do is that they affect memory, they affect how people think, and they, the, the diseases affect the person's ability to perform daily activities. So with dementia what happens is that there is a marked decline, I'm going to use some big medical terms, talk English doctor terms so you can stop me. So there's a severe decline in what we call cognitive functions, and by cognitive functions, we mean thinking, um, reasoning, and remembering. That's where the memory comes in. To the extent that these declines interfere with persons, personal uh, um, functioning. Now, many persons uh, equate dementia with old age. That should, not, that should not be so. So typically you'll find that dementia affects older persons, but it is not a normal part of the aging process. So as you get older, some persons may feel that an old person should, and to, to young people, old persons, anybody over 21 or 30, you know, as we get older, it kind of shifts but they feel that, I mean, you must have some problem with your memory, and that isn't so at all. So some amount of forgetfulness is sort of normal with age, but dementia is actually a severe disorder that, as I said, interferes with your normal functioning on a daily basis. I should give you some statistics here. Dementia is the fifth leading cause of death in Americans older than age 65 years. And as the US population ages, what they see happening is that by the year 2050, the estimated number of Americans living with dementia will increase from 5 million to about 14 million. And with that, the expenditure and their care will go up. So you might be wondering, what is the significance for here? The fact is that you will see, you will see by the next, well, it's not on this, we have a, a number of slides back, but it's okay. You will see that in Jamaica, the statistics show that a little under 18,000 persons currently in Jamaica are affected with dementia. When I mention these statistics, these are the people that people know about. So these are the people who, for example, will go to the health centers and there's a record. We know that many persons with different diseases, they are not into that system. So this number is actually higher. And it's projected that by the year 2050, then the number of persons in Jamaica with dementia should be about 41,000. So you can actually do an extrapolation. It's going to be actually higher than that. So you're thinking about those who are following the news, listening to our Minister of Health and Wellness, you're going to see that there's going to be an increase in the expenditure associated with caring for persons with dementia. So you might be asking yourself, 
I, some persons will come to, ask, to me and ask, what are the common forms of dementia? Remember I said that there are different diseases that cause dementia, and these diseases uh, cause injury to the brain, either directly or indirectly. So the first, when we talk about dementia, the first thing people are going to say is Alzheimer's. So remember, Alzheimer's, there are other types of dementia. There's one called vascular dementia. Um, Kevin, if you go, go again. The next one, next one. Aha, uh -huh. vascular dementia. I want you to remember that. Because in Jamaica, this is the commonest cause of dementia, not Alzheimer's that people are talking about. So if you come and you don't remember something, people say, she has Alzheimer's, nothing like that. This is what is happening to Jamaica, vascular dementia. And you may ask yourself, what is that? So vascular dementia, put it very simply, it's caused by a lack or a problem with the blood supply to the brain. So as we would say in med medicine, the pathology, the, the causes of Alzheimer's and uh, vascular dementia are going to be different. I don't see one of my students here. Um, she hiding. Okay. So in case you're wondering, I have to point you out. Okay, in your case you're wondering, right? There's a difference between the two of them. I won't point her out anymore. So you have uh, dementia with what we call some, some protein deposits occurring. There's another one called frontotemporal dementia. So it affects right here and here of the brain. Persons who have any idea of anatomy will think if there's a problem with this part of the brain, what this part of the brain controls. So different parts of our brains control different aspects of what happens with us. Dementia may also occur or may also develop after a stroke and it depends on where the stroke is. It also depends on uh, the number of strokes the person has. So the location of the stroke is one and we have a number of persons who may have multiple strokes. And so with those persons who have multiple strokes, sometimes it's not unusual to see them actually have what we call a deterioration in their cognitive skills. So deterioration in remembering things, reasoning, thinking, and so on. Dementia can occur with infections such as HIV. Dementia can occur with chronic alcohol abuse. I need to tell that to some of my friends who can consume copious bottles of wine at one sitting. But uh, chronic alcohol abuse. Dementia can occur with repetitive physical injuries to the brain. So if you think about those boxers, sometimes when you poof, 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 you know, we're talking about professional boxing. We're not thinking about the violence. That's another thing. They may sometimes develop dementia after a time. Dementia can occur as a result of nutritional deficiencies. Uh, a common one is vitamin B12 that can occur. Sometimes this is some older people. So I, when I lecture, I give all manner of stories. Um, you may see some persons, older people, and they come to you and you know, the relatives complaining, boy, they're not remembering anything. You just do the vitamin B12 levels. You see the B12 levels low, low, low. So give them B12 injections, supplement them, and granny's as happy as a lark. So you have to think about it. I'm not saying that vitamins are the solution, but you have to think about that too. So what, are, what increases the risk of uh, dementia? Age, as I said, is more common in older persons. We're talking about 65 and older. High blood pressure, diabetes, and I'm gonna stop right here. In my practice, the majority of persons who come with dementia or diagnosed with dementia, they're diabetic. Uncontrolled diabetes. And what happens is that the uncontrolled diabetes, what it does is that it causes, I'm going to use some big terms here, glycation of the proteins in the brain. So in other words, the sugar, the, the high sugar levels 
actually interfere with the structure of the brain. So that is what I see, and I'm not the only doctor seeing that. In fact, years ago, we would say that, and still sometimes we still say that, uh, dementia is um, like a, a third, another type of diabetes. That's how close they are. And if you think about it further, in Jamaica, one in three persons is hypertensive, one in eight persons is, is diabetic, and a number of persons are hypertensive and diabetic. So you hardly find a person who is a diabetic who is not hypertensive. So you see what I'm talking about. And many persons too are hypertensive and diabetic and they don't know. So you see how everything kind of mixed up there. Being overweight and obese is another factor. Smoking, we're talking about smoking cigarettes here. That is the, the thing. I'm not going to talk about ganja smoking, okay, there. Drinking too much alcohol, being physically inactive, being socially isolated. So those persons who just stay by themselves and not doing anything, they are at risk of developing dementia and also depression. So you might be wondering, some people saying, I wonder if I have dementia. You're wondering, right? So you're looking out for changes. You can skip to the next one. The next one, yes. I have a PowerPoint thing that just loves to change up things. You know, it's artificial intelligence. It just change it up and I love to play with it. So now, changes in the mood or behavior sometimes happen before the memory loss occurs. And the point is that the symptoms get worse over time. So eventually, most people with dementia will be needing some amount of help in due course. So some of the early signs and symptoms of dementia would include what we're saying, forgetting things or recent events. Some, some persons with dementia, you may be asking, you may say something to them. Like I know somebody who I said to her, hi, how are you? Um, this is, uh, she would say, this is Jackie. She knows me as Jackie. And I would say X to her. And then the next minute when I say it to her, she says, oh, Jackie, I didn't know that. So it's that sort of thing. So they forget the recent events. But things that may have happened to them, let us say, when they were children, they may remember that. Losing or misplacing things. That is the fact that I lose my car keys. It's not one, OK? <laughs> I find me and my car keys moving around, getting lost when walking or driving. It happens. It happens. It happens. Being confused, even in familiar places, not knowing that they're at home. And for example, to go to the door, they may forget that the pathway to get to the door. Losing track of time. Um, for example, problems following conversation, trouble finding words, and so on. These are some of the early signs. You may also find that there are changes in mood and behavior. I want to point out to you here. Kevin, can you the next slide? Um, there are a number of things. This is quite small for you to see, but there are some personality changes. I highlighted inappropriate behavior. Now, with persons who have vascular dementia or the frontoparietal um, dementia, because of what sometimes happens, because of where, where not because of the blood supply to these areas and what happens with these areas. Some of these persons, and I'm gonna make this point because we see it in the office all the time, they, they have highly sexualized behavior. So you may see night. Thanks. 
So it's a nice and proper granny who comes to church and so on and so forth. And then now, she starts to have signs of dementia. And then she starts to talk a lot about sex and how many um, lovers she wants to have and what she wants to do. And I'm saying it here that that is upsetting to many people in their families. And they think that something is really wrong. The fact is something is a little off. She has dementia and it is the disease that is speaking not the individual. So you'll find that these persons may sometimes be castigated by the family. I've seen it in the office, for example, people saying, shut up your mouth, and you know, want to almost abuse the person, when in essence it's the disease itself. So just remember that. So that's why I put that inappropriate behavior there. Um, some persons just become less interested in other persons' emotions, you know, just a, a, a a sort of, what am I going to say here? They, they just don't care. Okay, that is part of the disease. The point is that dementia affects each person in a different way. And depending upon the underlying causes, other health conditions and the person's what you call cognitive behavior or functioning before the person becomes ill. So those are the factors that you have to take into consideration. As I said, most people become worse overnight. Now, the next slide here, from here. Next one, Kevin. The next one. Yes. You may not be able to see it, but I wanted to make a point with this slide that uh, people with dementia may not be able to recognize family members or friends. So I said this publicly. Um, I have a radio show. I said it on a radio show. I've written newspaper columns about this particular one here, in that when my aunt, one of my aunts, had dementia, so I remember after work driving to auntie, hi, auntie, and so on. So my auntie said to me, so who are you? And I'm telling you, that threw me for six for one. I think that's it, Uncle Lloyd, three for six. I don't know what you say. But I found myself literally on the ground by her bedside crying because I couldn't believe that my auntie, who know me from before I was born, would be asking, who are you? And the interesting thing with it is that she knew, so I was crying, then the caregiver started to cry, and then she started to cry because she didn't know why she was crying, but she knew that she had done something to make me cry. So it was like a cry fest over something <laughs> like that, but that is just how what dementia does to people. And I'm a doctor. You get me? So that have nothing to do with it, when it's a relative. So persons with dementia, as I said, the disease progresses. You may find that they have difficulty doing things like going to the bathroom by themselves. They may have trouble eating and drinking. So you see what I talk about progression here. Um, some have experienced behavior such as aggression that is distressing to the person and also to those around them. So persons, some persons with, with dementia may, for example, want to take up a knife to kill somebody else. Don't take it personally. The person really doesn't want to kill you. You have to find ways to get around that. But it is very distressing. Now, there are some uh, stages of the pressure, the arm um, dementia, what to expect. I wanted to put this here. You have a no cognitive decline. There is one called very mild cognitive decline. Mild cognitive decline. So in other words, all of the stages. You start from one stage where nothing really is obvious to the severe cognitive decline where the person is not remembering anybody or so on. I highlighted the very mild cognitive decline because sometimes I see persons like that in my practice in that they may be the ones having occasional lapses of memory. So they may forget, for example, where they keep familiar everyday objects. 
we we'll keep the, the, the key for the house again, or they're forgetting somebody's name. The little, little things, and they may attribute that to age. It could be age. But when these persons actually go to the doctor, they come to me, and I'm doing my screening. So I do um, what you call a, one of the tests you can do is a mini mental status exam. Many times these people score perfectly on it. So when you're checking them out, you may say, well, nothing is happening. I just pointed that out to you. But as time goes by, they may start to show some symptoms. Like, for example, I have a patient who tell me this. I must keep a check on her. Um, she reading something, and she can't remember what she just read. So she read her Bible, and it's an elderly lady, so she know her Bible. So she read a passage, and she can't remember anything else after that. That shows something is happening there there or getting lost while walking so in the interest of time let me skip over this so what to do if your loved one has symptoms don't watch it we in jamaica love watch things we, we, we have a little chest pain we say it's gas we're going to watch it next thing is heart attack and you drop down so go to the doctor get properly evaluated the treatment there's really no cure but there are things that we can do depending on the type of uh, um, dementia that it is. There are some things that we can do, including supporting the person. Now, I want to make a case about self-care. Um, self For those persons diagnosed with dementia, let us say the early stages, because if you're diagnosed late, you can't do some of these. Let us say early stage. Stay physically active, eat healthily, stop smoking and drinking alcohol, get a regular checkup, the things that you know you're supposed to do, write down things. So write down the everyday tasks and appointments, actually write them down, and keep up with your hobbies. You have to do that to keep your mind occupied. And try new ways to keep your mind occupied do like, you know, these crossword puzzles uh, and so on. Do things like that. Learn to play an, a musical instrument. Even try to learn a new language. Things like that. Uh, spend time with, time with friends and family. So do not isolate yourself. Or, or family, do not isolate these persons. Um, plan ahead of time. Very, very important. Many times we don't plan to do things for, because as time goes by, it's going to be harder for you to have control over, let us say, your financial decisions or anything you want to do personally. So you have to identify those persons who will be of support to you. You have to create an advanced plan. Let me tell you something. If you have a dementia or any chronic illness, Apart from making a will, because we have, this can segue into end-of-life care, you have to do things like, if I go to the hospital, um, let us say I have a cardiac arrest, do I want to be resuscitated? Anybody has made such orders? No, a chance is no. Or have you had a conversation around the dinner table and you said to somebody, you know, if I sick and I go hospital and I well sick and they have to resuscitate me, tell them don't do it. You have to have things. Yeah, you have to. All right? Reach out to family and friends for help. Talk to persons. Join a local support group. At the end, I'm going to give you two contact persons. For the caregivers, this is very important because what I see in the practice I sometimes, you know, you see the patients coming in and you're really sorry for Miss Mary. But who are sorry for is Miss Mary's relatives because they are bearing the brunt of everything. It's important to recognize that providing care for someone with dementia is hard. It's very, very hard. Reach out to friends, family, get professional help. Take regular breaks, look after yourself. So we're talking about prevention now. So I'm showing you the same slide as before. 
in that. Uh, Kevin, you can, the next one, next one. So in terms of prevention, it's going to be the reverse of those things at risk. So we can't do anything about age. We all get older, with the exception of me. I sleep in a freezer at night. But serious, eh? I will. Yeah, you know, props. Um, hypertension, diabetes, keep those things under control. As the Ministry of Health and Wellness say, know your numbers. Hypertension, your diabetes, being overweight or obese, know your body mass index or your measurement around your waist. Don't smoke. Drink the occasional drink of alcohol yet. Keep physically active. They're going to do everything that is opposite to here. That is what we talk about, prevention. Human rights, very, very important. The persons who have dementia, they are human beings. They also have rights. Because they are, are behaving differently does not mean that they should be tied up underneath a tree in the sun hot, which frequently happens. They are human beings. You have to find a way to manage it. Very important here. Take home message is that dementia is a term for several diseases that affect the brain, the memory, and the thinking. Alzheimer's. Next slide, Kevin. These are two, if you want to take the information here, you can, anybody who's interested. Alzheimer's Jamaica, it's run by someone named Dundee Ferguson. Um, Instagram, that's what IG is for. That's her Instagram. You can um, get in touch with her via um, Alzheimer's JA. And she has a lot of posts about dementia in general. And Deborah Callender, now Deborah is a really special person in that she actually has, a, both of them have support groups. But this is Deborah's number. She gave me permission to share her phone number with the group. You can send her a WhatsApp message and she has an active support group that is, that is going. It says 876-829-8200. For those persons who are interested, on Tuesday coming, she's having a big uh, dementia forum that you can actually register for. It's free, and you'll get more information on that. So thank you. Any questions? Can you get a microphone for the people who have questions, please? Don't even want. Could you start the question again, please? Start again. Start over, please. A question Do you know anyone in Montego Bay that deal with dementia? My dad is at a stage you now, very aggressive. He doesn't want to show up. He doesn't eat. I mean, you have to buy like snacks and all of that. So if you have to where we could reach out to, I would be grateful. So your, your dad has profound dementia, as we would say. Is it that you're looking for a caregiver or what you need in terms of support? Um, speak to Deborah. So don't call her today, Sunday. Call her tomorrow. Don't call her Tuesday because of the forum, but call her tomorrow or send her a WhatsApp and she will, I'm sure. Just tell her I send you. Mm -hmm. And just to say that the, the presentation is, is online, so you can get a present, watch that any time. Morning. The judge will Hello. be given. The question can, is, hold, hold a second. Somebody, go ahead. Can you please say at what age can someone get dementia? Um, you can have young... You, you, who's... who's um, do you have uh, what you call uh, young onset dementia, you know? So you can have persons under the age of uh, 65 who have dementia. 
Yeah. So it's called Young Onset Dementia. Okay. So and there isn't any real age as such, but you do have younger persons who, who can have dementia. If you think about the vascular dementia, for example, let us look at someone who are young, you can call whatever you're going to call young, who has had multiple strokes. Okay. And remember, I spoke to you about how you get the vascular dementia. That person can have um, dementia. I do believe I have a patient. She's about in her, she's about mid-50s, and she has some significant cognitive decline. And it's because of multiple strokes that she has had. Uh-huh. Thank you very much You're welcome. for listening to me. Hello. You're welcome. Hi. Hello. Good. Question across here. Dr. Jackie, uh -huh. question here. Hold on a second. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, I thank you for mentioning it for the key, because just as you mentioned it, my phone is inside here. <laughs> so I went back for it. Now, I don't smoke. I don't drink alcohol, nothing like that. You said something that you mentioned about the uh, ganja. And I understand that ganja has so many uh, positive in it. So what happened to the ganja why you wouldn't speak to it? Because I didn't have any literature to say that ganja smokers have, a, so I don't have any evidence to say that about it. But when you talk about ganja, I should point out that the, what we call the psychoactive part of ganja, so the part that actually makes you high, that is caused by a cannabinoid called Delta 9 THC. Now the part, you no, know, I have some ganja rub, you know, that I use on my knee. It don't have no THC in it. It have been other what we call cannabinoids. So you have a number of what we call cannabinoids, and they work in different ways. So you have the part of cannabis. So that's why you have a medical marijuana industry, which is very, very good. But you have the other part of cannabis, um, which has the deleterious effects there. So I didn't have any evidence to say to you, let us say persons who smoked, and who were exposed to Delta 9 HC, where we're seeing increased cases of uh, um, dementia in those persons. I didn't have any evidence, so therefore I didn't mention it. So that will be the answer to your question. Mm -hmm. um, I have a question, Dr. Okay. <laughs> Hi. Yes, Hi. yes, Hi. your student. Um, I wanted to ask, I know that there are very few medications out there that Say that that seem to help um, dementia. Are there is there any access for Jamaica? You know, is there any um, road to trying to get medications and cheaper? Um, the point is with the medications for dementia. Alyssa, the ones that you would know about that I would have taught you about, those would be for Alzheimer's, because remember the Alzheimer's. Alyssa, Alyssa, remember, okay, remember the Alzheimer's, the pathophysiology of that is different with the what you call, we're talking our language here. You have the what you call the neurofibrillary tangles and the tau protein. So those medications you're talking about would be targeting those, but let us say vascular dementia. The treatment of vascular dementia would not be those drugs. That's why sometimes if persons just put people on the, those drugs and say, it's not working, it's because the, the, the type of dementia that the person has. So if the person has a mixed dementia, let us say vascular and Alzheimer's, then you can use the Aricept and the Donepezil and Memantazine, all of those. But like the vascular dementia, what you'd have to do is treat the underlying disease, so it's the cholesterol, hypertension, diabetes, and get um, stuff to increase the blood flow. So that is, that is our language. Thanks, Doc. And I have to run away, so please excuse me. Bye-bye. Take care. Um. All the best. Okay. Question, 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 Doc. Uh, oh. She had a question. Just a Go second, ahead. Ashley. Sir. Okay. Um, what she was saying, interesting. 
Um, her friend got dementia at 55 and died at 59. Ah, interesting. just go gradually. Yeah. Pardon me? Someone told us that your body got slowed down, all of what you're doing now, and then you died um, eventually it's from slow. dementia. Oh, that's an interesting way to look at it. Dementia is to me the sort of slow eating of your brain. That is my interpretation because many of the persons with dementia you know you may find that there may be nothing else going on wrong with them apart from this the cognitive decline so it's like somebody trapped into a body that is when he so he had the clot in the brain and it took the removal. So it's a question, no. You don't just get a clot in your brain just so. There's a reason for you to get a clot in the brain. So where did that clot come from? Well, it probably, the clot in the brain, so you, he would have had a stroke. He had what now, fall. Ah, and then. So, and so he had a fall. So yes, I get in it now. So, mm -hmm. so you had what is known as a traumatic brain injury, and as a result of that, he gradually developed the, 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 the dementia. Mm. Call Deborah. Call, call Debbie and see how she can help you. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm, actually, I'm actually helping to manage another friend who has dementia, and what I'm finding with her is that when, when you're trying to get her to eat, and she starts to eat. Um, she, just, she just doesn't finish. It's like, I don't know, it's like something in the brain is yes. not clicking. Yes. And she might just start the thing and she just pick the thing and then she, you know. Yeah, it happens. You just, yeah, sometimes it happens and it depends on the part of the brain that was affected. And just have to have a lot of patience. And that is probably what you now makes the body deteriorate because obviously if you're not eating and you're not eating properly, then, then the body what itself is, is going to, is going to so break down. So you have the nutritional deficiencies. And remember I spoke about the fact that you can have a nutritional deficiency that gives rise to dementia. So that is like a component. And that is one of the reasons why the persons with dementia, they really need to be evaluated you need to, they need to be checked out properly to see what is happening there because there can be a number of things happening to, to this particular person. Doc, uh, just <coughs> two things. Sure. The worst case of dementia that I've seen is someone who totally stopped eating. She couldn't yes. swallow. Yes. She would chew and chew and chew and chew and would not she swallow. She swallow. She can't swallow. Right. That she mechanism can't. is not there. Right. And so she had to be fed intravenously. Now my, my main concern, though, is what advice you have for caregivers, because I've seen so many caregivers die before the person they are caring for. And that's my greatest concern, because my, my mother had dementia, my mother-in-law had dementia, so I know it's very difficult to cope. What advice do you have for us persons who have family members who have dementia? One of the things would be you need to evaluate the situation and uh, seek help. Seek, seek help. Get some help. Because many times, you know, I see people getting help for their relative, but at times it may not be the wrong type of help. So what, I'm being very frank here, so what I see, yeah, you may have somebody in, let us say, the community, you find a lady who can help. But this person who can help is not trained to help somebody with dementia. So what happens is that this person may end up abusing the individual. So you as the main caregiver, you're going to say, 
can't bother. Let me go back to doing what I was doing before. So you need to get some help, seek help, get the right amount of help. As Deborah Callender will say, because she said this on a radio show, that her mother had dementia. And there was a point, remember she said this, when her own mother could not stand the sound of her own voice, meaning Debbie's voice. So she had to step back. Now she's an expert in dementia. She knows how to help people with dementia. And her own mother could not stand the sound of her own voice. So she had to get help. So many times as caregivers, we have to get some help mm. one way or the other. Seek help. Many times they don't want to. Sometimes the resources are not there. That is a big thing too. But you're going to have to seek some amount, some amount of help. That's what I would say. The next thing for the caregivers would be you're going to have to get some time to, to step away from the situation and get some rest there. And this is where the alternate help comes, comes in. Yeah, see, get, get support. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And also, the last thing I would say is uh, get help from the support groups. In Jamaica, we don't tend to like the support groups because they may end up being vulnerable and so on. You know, depends on it. But these two persons here, these two groups, they're quite good. And they will help uh, you, the caregiver. And they have different tips to help you to to navigate this difficult space. Yep. Yes, actually, come. Just as a follow-up to that, Jackie, in terms of the church, how can we as a church respond to this? I think as a church, the church needs in many ways to bring awareness um, to the congregations about the different health uh, issues that are facing us. If you look on dementia, for example, the, the risk factors for dementia would include hypertension, would include diabetes, the common diseases. So yes, you're going to talk about dementia, but the church needs to also bring awareness um, about hypertension, diabetes, um, dyslipidemia, high cholesterol, just keeping your body healthy. We know that you're not going to live forever. That is not for us. But you want to keep your body as healthy as possible. So as my friends would say, you die healthily. You know? So that is what I think the church needs to focus on. That's what you need to focus on. So something like this is always good. And of course, encourage movement. Exercise, yeah. That is um, quick, quick question, Jackie. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of the vascular dementia, do you find that to be more prevalent among the different type of dementias that you have? In Jamaica, 40%. Oh. You see, 40%. That's why when Archdeacon uh. asked me to talk about mm -hmm. Alzheimer's, mm -hmm. I still remember I said I wasn't going to talk about Alzheimer's going to talk about dementia because in our setting, mm -hmm. you're going to see most people having 40 percent, yeah, about that, with vascular dementia. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. um, so like in your private practice, right, you basically have different tests in terms of assessing whether somebody would um, be prone to be developing dementia. On, uh, more in the public sectors, is there any focus in terms of screening for um, I don't, I don't know about the public setting, but say, say somebody comes in to me and I'm thinking of a particular patient I have who she always forgetting things. She'll forget her cell phone here and she's just scattered, you know, um, very, very scattered. So persons like that and anybody once you reach the age of 70, I do a mini mental status examination on you. It doesn't take any, it's just a sheet of paper, you ask a particular question, so you begin the screening, you begin the screening there, and obviously anybody with hypertension, diabetes, all those sort of things, you want to make sure that's controlled as people, as it can, but we're dealing with human beings, you know, 
what doctor says is not necessarily what people are going to do. <laughs> but okay. you, you try and do your best. All right, uh, friends, I want to thank, well, well, thank Dr. Campbell. Just, yes. Where is the function on Tuesday? Thanks, Colin. The, the, it's an online webinar. So there's a number that was on the screen, Deborah Calendar. If you call that number, she would be able to give you the registration details. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So she's going to have one Tuesday coming and one hopefully in February. But you can, you can call her. Call her tomorrow. Okay. Thank you very much. And, and I know that we will continue the discussion during the month of October when we have Health Month and various issues will be discussed.